John here. So we talked about linked lists, or singly linked lists in particular, when we were dealing with using them to create a stack, all right? And when we did that, we only concerned ourselves with inserting and deleting nodes at the head of the linked list. And that was kind of the easy case. They only have to deal with one situation. We unified the case where we were inserting into an empty list versus ins inserting into a list that has uh, items already in it. So we only had one set of code that we really had to write for push and the same thing for pop, right? It only added new nodes to the beginning. So like, for example, if we wanted to add a new node whose ID or value I should say is zero, what do we do? We create the node. We then make a copy of <clears throat> the current value of this head pointer, right? And we copy that value into our new node here, okay? So that this now points to node one, and then we just replace the head pointer like that to point to our new node. That works if we add a node to an empty list as well as to a non-empty list. So let's erase this and see how that works. Quick review. We start out with an empty head pointer. We create a new node. Let's say node zero again. All right. How do we insert that when the list is empty? We do the same thing. We copy the value from the head pointer into here, which is null. Makes this thing like so. Then we update the head pointer to point to our new node. So the same logic works in both cases. Now, what if we want to deal with a case where we want to add new nodes into a non-empty list without inserting them at the head. Like I want to add a node two over here to the end of this list. All right, well, it turns out we can use the same logic that we use to insert it at the head of the list. We treat this right here as if it were the head of the list that remains. Quite frankly, it is, right? What is the head but a pointer to a node? that we're using to represent the beginning of a whole list of nodes. Well, this node here has a pointer in it that can be thought of as the head of all the other nodes in this list. So the operation should be then the same. If we consider this to be the new head of the list that remains, we're gonna copy the current value of that into the new node so that means this is going to be set to null and when we're done we change this pointer to point to the new node let's say i want to put node one in the sequence right create it and then do what we want to put it after node zero so again we'll treat node zero's next pointer as if it is the head of the rest of the list, right now it is. What do we do? We copy the current value into the new node, which makes that new node now point to node two. And then we replace the current value in that pointer, point to the new one. So that works in all four of our cases of interest, right? Insert into an empty list, insert into the head of a list that may have uh, other nodes in it, and insert into the middle of the list, insert onto the end of the list. All right, let's look at some code, how you would implement this sort of thing. Uh, here's my list. I got a node. The node is the next pointer, and it has a value that is an integer type of a constructor that sets the value, and it sets the next pointer to null pointer just to initialize it. This is not really necessary in this particular example because I'll always set it immediately after constructing it anyway. But just for the sake of uh, thoroughness, I'll throw it in there. Let's look at this print list routine here. Uh, I use this for debugging. So let's look and see what happens going on in here. Uh, I say print list and I give it a pointer to a node, which is the address of the first node in the list that I want to print. Okay, so I print out a nice heading. Then I print out node and I print P. So that prints out the address 
of the node. I print out the next field, and that's another address, and I print out the value so I can just see what's going on in this list. This loop here, the while p is asking whether p is zero or not, right? Zero is false, and anything that's not zero is true. And it turns out null pointer is zero. So this is basically saying, well, p is not null. Print out the contents of the node that p points to. Put p to point to the next node in our list. And you just simply do this until p becomes null. All right. Now let's look at our insert node routine. What do we got here? We have a pointer to a pointer. Let's look at that in more detail. This is the pointer to the next pointer in the node that precedes the new node. This is a pointer to either the head pointer of the whole list or a pointer to the node after which I want to insert a new node. The other parameter here, there's an error in my doc, pn is going to be the pointer to the new node, right? So what do I do? The next pointer in the new node is getting a copy of the current pointer in the previous node or the head of the list, right? That was the red line that I used on the whiteboard. That's this operation. After that's done, I can say update the head pointer or the pointer that I had already copied out by pointing it at the new node. So how do I use this thing? I create my P head pointer and I set it to null. The list is empty. And I print it out just to make sure I'm sane. Can I print an empty list? I certainly should, right? What will it do? It'll print out this header here. And, and P will be null in this case because the header it's the header pointer and it's null. So this is false. It doesn't do anything. It'll just say list followed by nothing, which is an empty list. Then I say I'm going to insert a new node into an empty list. And I go create one. I give it the value 1. And I call insert node. And I give it a pointer 2 the head node as its first parameter. And then I give it a pointer to the new one, right? I print it out again. So it should print out a, a, a list with a single node in it. I then insert a new node at the head of a non-empty list. So I should end up with this. I create node two, insert node into the head of the list, pn2, print it out, okay? Then what do I want to do? I want to insert a new node at the tail. So in order to do this, I have to remember or find or locate or whatever. I have to find this node here. Because remember, if I want to insert a new node into this list, I have to find the thing before it. And the thing before it when you're the head is the head pointer itself. If I want to insert a new node after node number one, you'll see in here what I'm doing is I'm giving it an address of the pointer inside node one, I'm saying, look, I take my node three and make node one point to it now, okay? That's really kind of what's happening here, right? Uh, there's another thing also, because three needs to point at whatever one used to point to, which in this case is null, all right? I print it out again, I should see this. Here's the, the fourth case here. Let's say I want to insert a new node uh, number four after node one again. Okay, it makes sense. But node 1 currently points at node 3. I want to end up with this, right? I want node 1 to go to the new node, and the new node should go over to 3. And, of course, it will because we give it pointer to the next pointer at the end of that's inside of node 1. We say connect node 1 to node 4 and print it out. And, of course, quick review again. Connecting node 1 to node 4 is done like this. This is the assignment statement that will update the pointer in node 1 and this one here is the is the line of code that connects node 4 in this case to node 3 so what we need to do is connect 4 to 3 first before we destroy the pointer in node 1 right so the order of operations there is pretty important here if you connected 1 to 4 before you connected four to three, you will have lost where three is. The only thing pointing to three at this point in the code is node one. So you need to remember where that is. Okay, that's why the order of these two is important. All right, so let's look at this thing run. Now that was example three in this list of example programs here that I'll post on my 
website and we run it. So what happens here? Insert a node into a non-empty list. Okay, so we remember the first thing I did is I printed out the empty list itself. Then I printed out a comment that said, I'm going to put a new node, node 1, into an empty list. So what's going to happen? Prints out the list header. It prints out the, uh, the node and its address. And this will just be wherever in the heap uh, the new operator decides to put it. So blah, 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 ending in E280. The next pointer is zero because it's null and the value is one. It got this null by copying it out of the head pointer, right? So what happens now when we say put a new node into the head of a non-empty list and then print it out? Well, now we have number two coming before number one when we traverse this list, right? So now the E280, which is the address of node one, becomes the next pointer of our new node, E280, right here. And the list now starts at E2A0, okay? So node 2 is located at E2A0. Its next pointer points to where node 1 was and still is at E280. Value is 2, and node 1 is not touched in any way. After that, what happens? We want to insert a new node at the tail of a non-empty list. So here's the two and the one that we just saw and the three on the end of it. And this all makes sense. What happens in there? Right, the A0 node, which is two, points to 280. And here's the 280 node, which up here used to end in with an X pointer with a null. So we updated that node to now point to E2C0, which is where node three is. And node 3 is the end of the list. This null here was copied into node 3 when it was inserted because it was copied from the old tail of the list, which was at node 1. And that, of course, was done before updating node 1 to point to node 3 down here. All right, so now what happens? We put one in the middle of the list. Uh, the list starts the same, right? Because A0 is where node 2 is. 2 pointed to 1 before, and it still does, right? Now 1 this time points to node number 4. Node number 4 is at E2, E0. So I put node 4 between 1 and 3. 1 is at 8, 0. 3 is at C0. So what happens here? 8, 0 now points to the new node. And the new node points to old node 3, which is still the end of the list, right? So now we have boiled down to all of those four cases into one set of code to handle all four, which is a great place to be when you're writing code, because now I only have to uh, maintain two lines of code, no matter which of those four cases are being dealt with. We've already discussed how to delete the head node from a list when we were doing our stack example. So if we wanted to delete node number zero over here, what do we do? Well, we just copy its next pointer into the head of the list. So this thing goes away and it's replaced with this pointer that points over to node one. After that, we can delete this node out of the list and we're left with what we want, all right? Now, what happens if we want to delete other nodes, right? So let's put together a list. Let's put zero back in here. So if we have a non-empty list and we want to delete something other than the head node, what do we need to do? Well, it works very similarly, right? You've got this. Let's say we want to delete node number one, all right? So what we need to do is get this guy here. The node zero's next pointer simply needs to come up and go over here and point to number two. And we do that by copying the current next pointer from node 1 into node 0, which causes this pointer here to then point over here, at which point in time it's just like deleting off the head of the list. There's nothing pointing to node 1 here anymore, so we can just delete it. Well, what if we need to delete something off the tail of the list, right? Same exact thing. We take, we want to delete node 2 in that scenario, right? that follows node zero. Well, we need to copy its current next pointer over to here, which causes this now to become a null pointer. 
At which time nothing's really pointing at 2 anymore, so we can delete that node. Okay, so this all really works the same way. It's the same trick that we used for inserting into the middle of the list. We simply treat these next fields in the various nodes the same way we treat the head when we're trying to insert and delete nodes from the head of the list. Now let's see how that's implemented in the code. So let's review our main real quick here. What do we got going on here? Here's our insert routines. I removed the extra print lines and things from this code here. So I'm simply going to say new, insert, new, insert, and so on. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to build the same list we had before. That ends with two pointing to one, pointing to four, pointing to three. Okay. Now how do we delete, right? Okay, so we're going to say delete node. If I give it a pointer to the head of the list, it will delete the first node from the list, leaving us with this, right? If I say delete node and I give it a pointer to the next pointer in PN1, that says delete the node that comes after PN1. That'll delete node number four, all right? And then again, I print it out. And here's how I can just simply delete them all. We'll look, come back and look at that in a minute. Let's look at the delete. De Let's look at the delete node code up here. There's our insert node. We're already familiar with that. Delete node. What are we doing? We're giving it a pointer to the next pointer in the node that precedes the one we want to delete, right? If we want to delete node four here, what we have to do is give it a pointer to the next pointer inside node one. So what this really means is delete the node that comes after this guy here. And that makes sense, right? Because up here, when we say delete node P head, we're saying delete the node that comes after the head of the list. That's the beginning of the list, right? So that's how you get rid of node number two. Give it the address of P head. That is what comes before the first node in the list. That's why node two goes away here. And that's why node four goes away when we give it a pointer to the next pointer that's part of the node with a number one in it right there okay so let's go back up here so I, so that's how we interpret this parameter the argument right here right so what do we do i want to make sure that my code won't crash when i screw up my test code down below by saying look does did i get a pointer to null <laughs> okay <laughs> make sure that we actually have a node to delete if i don't check for this first what happens is things like Thing, th this right here could fail, all right? So I need to check. If I say delete the node that comes after, for example, node three here, by de definition, its next field is null here, okay? So I'm checking against that, all right? Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to say, remember where the thing is that I'm gonna delete. Update the pointer that I've been given, okay? Update the thing that PP points at. That could be the head, or that could be the next pointer in some node. And I'm doing this to get rid of the thing that comes after it. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna say, set that pointer to the next pointer that it currently points at, all right? So let's look at this thing. We got an order of operations problem here. If I just simply said star PP right arrow next, all right, what that would be doing is it would say, this means something very different, right? This means this, all right, which is very different than this. So keep in mind your order of operations, all right? So what does this thing really mean, okay? Star PP is the address of the node we want to delete, right? Because what we've given here is a pointer to a pointer to a node. And when we called it, we gave it a pointer to the next pointer that's inside PN1 right here. It points at four, so a pointer to a pointer to four, okay? This code here says, go into node whose ID number four and grab the next pointer from that node and copy it into 
the next pointer from node one in this example down here, right? So this is the thing that creates that leapfrogging, right? The red line, this is the thing that copies the next pointer of the one that I want to delete into the one that came before it. When I'm done with that, I can then delete the node that I want to get rid of. So this is example number six of these example programs. Let's make sure they are all compiling. Let's run example six and see what we got going on here. We first start with the de debugging, uh, printing an empty list. Yes, it works. Then I printed build a list. Here's my list, my two, one, four, three list that we saw in the insert example. Now what do I do here? I delete the head uh, node, right? So I got two, one, four, three, and I'm left with one, four, three. So from a bird's eye view, that looks pretty good, right? So what are we doing in here? The list used to start with 72A0, which then pointed to 7280, and so on. Now the list starts at 7280, which then points to E, and so on, just like it did up here, okay? So the first node went away, and it sh as it should have. We already talked about that when we were talking about stacks. Now, what does it mean to delete node 4 here? I want to get rid of this guy, okay? So we should see that the next pointer in node 1 should no longer point to this 72E0. It should go all the way down and point to 72C0, getting rid of this guy, right? And that's what we have. So now the front of the list at 7280, which is node 1, points to 72C0, which is node 3, and node 3 is a null, just like it did before, okay? So this got rid of node 4. So this is nice. It really is. We have two simple cases to deal with in singly linked lists. How do I insert a node? How do I delete a node? And what is the overall theme of this whole thing, right? When you insert a node, you need to give it a pointer to the field that's inside the previous node after which you want to insert this new node. When I'm deleting, I'm really updating the thing that comes before the thing that I'm deleting. When I'm inserting, same thing. I got to update the thing that comes before the new node that I want to insert. So these things have a very similar theme, right? When I'm inserting, I need to give it a reference to the thing that comes before the new node I want to insert. When I'm deleting, I need to refer to the thing that comes before the node I want to delete. Now, what about this while loop down here? This should make sense at this point. If the head of the list is not null, it means that there's at least one item in it. And if I delete the front item from the list, I can just continuously do this until the head pointer becomes null, at which point I know there's no elements left in the list. So I'm going to push these example programs up onto Blackboard or something. And you can look at them all. This is a, each one of these is an incremental derivation of what I presented, right? So if we look quickly at example zero, what I have here is oh, a fully hard coded creation of the list. And I incrementally step one at a time to generalize this code. So if you don't get the, the discussion, maybe you can go walk through all these different example programs and see how I go from just hard coding point here, point there, it's like this, up to this generalized code that you see in example three. I do the same thing for deletions as I uh, come up with a unified solution example six, which I showed you on the whiteboard. All right, so thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.